normal hits with extra steps. I forgot Relwood had a game and watch. But yeah, that's also a really good. <laughs> yeah, no. If I had to choose between instant and game and watch to go against Snake, I I'd choose game and watch. I just I just forgot that was on the table. Because think about game and watch, you have bucket. So if Walugi goes into normal Snake brain, where it's just like my opponent is close to C4, I will explode it now then you could be charging up a very devastating down beam for Game & Watch. Among other things, just Game & Watch is a good character. I have to preface this. Bucket alone does not make the matchup good for Game & Watch. There's that upper coming out. It always feels icky when Game & Watch hits Sour Spot F Smash. Because it feels like it hits hard, and it does, but like, there's just something off about it. But Rowe just kind of covering everywhere while Lugi wants to go with some sort of move, whether it be an up B, a fair, an up air. Dash attack, giving Snake his own treatment, because that's kind of that's kind of Snake's thing. Is like, if you whiff a move, Snake will hit you with dash attack. But now, feels like Table is kind of being turned a bit here. I can't believe that Nikita still hit. Oh, did that two frame, or did Ro would just decide to go above ledge? I don't know. We're back to even stocks. Y'all remember Smash Four, right? Yeah, good awareness from Rolo just being like, yeah, I can, I can use another back air, it's fine. <laughs> That's humorous. Just up being straight into the cipher. And I feel like it's it's when uh, Walugi is trying to get like off of these platforms, these side Kalos platforms, that Rollwood is finding like most of these hits which is weird because people a lot of the time will just disregard the platforms on Kalos also might I add using Kalos as a starter is unhinged <laughs> no set no set should start on this stage but it is working like I understand but why was this a starter <laughs> I mean, I'm all for it because we we've all seen PS2 uh, enough times. That was interesting, but all right. But we've all seen PS2 a bajillion times now. Also, fun fact for you, chat, chatter. I don't I don't know how many people are in chat, but I forgot what I was gonna say. Actually, <laughs> in all honesty. I completely forgot what I was gonna say. So never mind until I until I remember it again. Dang, I really just let it go like that. That's crazy. Ah, it'll come back to me, or it won't. Yeah, that's gonna weigh on me. I, I just I, I just gotta focus on the set. F tilt coming out. But yeah, this this game and watch that I wasn't really expecting is kind of going in. This ah <laughs> oh, I remembered. I was gonna say game and watch's best kill throw. Well, he doesn't have a kill throw, but his best throw for killing is actually down throw. That's what I was gonna say. I just thought that was funny. But this jab is honestly kind of getting there. I feel like one more, especially like on one of these platforms, and it might just be curtains for Walugi's game here. Yeah, that was out throw. 
It was there. I saw it. Y'all saw it. That was down throw. But this is honestly still really risky for for uh, Railway just because Game of Watch is a light character and Snake hits hard. Like that, if there was an up tilt right there or an F tilt, because like while Lugi correctly read the roll, it just wasn't able to follow up on it. Yeah, Rollwood, kind of lucky there, getting that. You know, well, not lucky for getting the chair, but just lucky for not having the stock be taken after that uh, down throw. But, yeah, that Game & Watch is definitely working out. Character that, again, I forgot he had. <laughs> Yeah, I'm definitely saying Game & Watch if, I, if I'm real with. I see no reason to go any other character. I love this song. This is the best Pokemon song in this game. But... Dash is hacking straight through that bomb. That is kind of the duality of... Game and Watch Fair is that like, well, yeah, it's a bomb that has a bomb hitbox that hits as hard as a bomb. You can also deactivate it, but you can deactivate it by throwing hands. And I don't know if y'all realize this, but throwing hands is kind of the name of the game. So when it works, it's good, but it's very easy to make it not work. But while well, we just trying to get more of these down smashes. Also, why are we back on on, on Kalos? Kalos is a stage that you go to one time in a game because you want it to work and then it just doesn't. So then you're like, never again. But here we are on game two. And I'm only saying this because, like, yeah, of course Relwood would want to go back to here, but I don't know why Walugi would want to. Because I feel like Kalos is one of the most anti-snake stages out there. Just because have you have that larger ceiling, which is bad into Snake, because he has a lot of, like, most of his prominent kill options are vertical. Think of, like, up tilt, uh, C4, even, like, up air, you know? All of those are like very prominent moves that he can kill with. And then also like kind of the way off stage is. Well that might be better because you can't really mix up Nikita by going onto the stage the same way. But it does allow you to mix it up sort of with characters that have like wall jumps. Obviously Mr. Game & Watch does not but it is something to consider for other characters. Yeah, and that game I watch up smash. The move itself is actually kind of like slow, but the fact that it, it is unpredictable and 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 hits hard, it's kind of the the thing that makes it powerful. And while it does have like a, a decent bit of startup lag, its end lag is there's almost none to speak of. And I feel like Relwood has kind of been like, I know I said this earlier, but, like, Snake Dash Attack is normally the move you, you go to as a Snake player when your opponent whiffs a move. But Relwood has kind of just been on top of that and be like, I whiffed a move, I think a Dash Attack is coming, so I'm just going to up you immediately. And it's been working. Yeah, and that chair has just been so useful in just finding stocks for what, uh, <clears throat> Excuse me, Railwood. But now, yeah, finally getting off of that platform. But I feel like both these players are kind of just res respecting each other right now, which is what you need to do, given the characters on screen. Ooh. 
I like the idea with that from C4. Every snake does it, but I like when they do it. <laughs> it still impresses me. Oh, but yeah, there's the, there's that F smash. The berry hitbox being like just far enough out from Game & Watch to where you get the sweet spot on F smash is diabolical. I don't know who designed the game like that. <laughs> But I don't like them. Actually, I don't care. I play sorties. Game and Watch is not a matchup I worry about. If I'm if I'm losing to a Game and Watch player, then that player is just straight up better than me. That is the only way I lose to Game and Watch is if they're better than me. And I'm probably gonna know if they're better than me before I play against them. So the matchup itself is gonna be the least of my problems. And. I see, we're going to Kalos without the platforms. Which honestly is a good call uh, on Walugi's part because I feel like a lot of the damage was coming from actually just trying to get off of the platforms, especially in that first game. So now that there aren't um, there aren't as many to worry about, Relwood doesn't have that same like avenue for, for winning neutral and just getting damage uh, as he used to. And so far, it is looking uh, Walugi favorite, although... I mean, Game & Watch is a very unpredictable character, and I feel like Titan swing very easy with him on screen. But... And... I... I've... I got it. I got my validation. Snake Up Air did, in fact, take a stock this set. It is a common kill move. I don't know if anybody actually doubted me on that or not, but in case you were, you are now no longer. Ooh. Just good on Railwood, just being like, ah, this is an awkward situation. What should I do? Oh, yeah. Up B. Railwood kind of looking for like, substantial hits there, just not getting them. All the while, Walugi is getting all of them. And honestly, I think the absence of platforms here is really, like... I'm not gonna say it's causing Relwood to struggle, but it is causing Walugi to thrive a bit more, move around uh, the way he probably wants to. Although FT can be limiting sometimes, just because you don't have, like, platforms to dance around. Although, Snake isn't really one of those characters, so it, it works out here. That's such a threatening F smash. Can that two-frame? It feels like it can two-frame, but I feel like the devs just wouldn't let it for some reason. It's probably impossible to, to actually, like, line up anyway, consistently. But yeah, that C4 is taking it. It really felt like Kalos was the driving force behind those first two games for Railwood. After seeing that game, uh, I'm imagining we don't go back. Yeah, Waldugi well, probably banned it. And we are... We're going to uh, stage with the same amount of platforms as Kalos, but not in the same layout. It is small battlefield. Three, two, one. And now you know Relwood is going serious because he switched to blue Game & Watch to match the background. It gives him a tactical advantage, see? Snake is all red and stuff, and then that con that that uh, contrasts a lot with the background, so it makes it easier to see. <laughs> so you know, power camouflage is on Relwood's side right now, and platforms. I think that's the most important part here. Oh, duh! It's the most important part here. I don't think there's a single person watching me like, oh yeah, I think the I think the camouflage is really gonna let him <laughs> etch out a win here. <laughs> but 
Oh yeah, and I feel like that's something that that Rollwood wasn't really getting as many of that that last game, which was the chairs. Not even like not killing, not in neutral, just in general. So I feel like there's something about just dropping off platforms that makes chair easier to hit. This is me trying to make sense of it, where perhaps there literally just is no connection. Whatever, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a speculative guy. That C4 hitbox is huge. And it almost costed the slot, kind of. I think Rollwood is living that for like a decent range of percent, but it was threatening. Ooh, good on Rollwood for just knowing uh, he has enough time before the mortar actually like comes down. That is three nares in a row that just straight up didn't fully connect. There was the the nair from below ledge, and then those two nairs that on that last stock. But well, he's gotten his mojo back. Can he hit the Can he hit the launch hitbox of a third nair? He can indeed! Everybody give it up for Game & Watch Nair for beating the bad multi-hit allegations. And speaking of moves that avoid those allegations up air, that was a very good one. But... And now we're kind of playing this... this this game of, of footsies where like neither player really wants to approach because they know what the other character is, is kind of capable of. And this, and this goes especially for Walu because yeah, Rollo's showing it off. You're like, this is the move that you have to be wary of. Although if I'm being real, he's probably gonna take the suck with, with chair if I'm gonna be real. That one scene, that one scene in Shrek. Give him the chair. He gave him the chair. Just hit shield. Ah, <laughs> uh, but yeah, that turtle will take it. Ooh, I like the idea with that uh, with that down smash there. Just didn't charge it enough. Or I guess delay it long enough. That's what I'm trying to get out with that. Now, also, I can't help but wonder if Relwood was using the comms to get, like, the download <laughs> on Walugi as the game before, because I know he was noting on, like, Walugi is throwing hands out of these, out of getting hit, and I was like, or I'm, or I'm now wondering, like, are you making use of that, sir? Because <laughs> it feels like he is. I think, uh, Rel would just, like, barely avoided that C4. Gave him the chair! <laughs> just, just standing looking at each other. And now... Snake is a character with a lot of damage output and kill potential. And Game & Watch kind of has both of those, but he has better like frame data, so it makes up for it. It is definitely Relwood favored right now, but I'm saying Walugi definitely has avenues to, uh, to take the game. And I think really playing it effectively right now, just slowing it down, actually, like, getting Relwood up to a, a percent that is, you know, reasonable to look for kills at. Like 100. <laughs> Sunfish popping off over a game five. No, I get it. it it's hype. But I think no matter what, Kalos is just 
Uh, all right, man. Kalos is probably not an option on the table anymore. I didn't see what what stage uh, they picked, but I'm assuming Kalos was never on the table. Yep, going straight back to uh, small battlefield, which I understand. That entire game was Relwood favor favored, but just Snake with Rage, haha. <laughs> Cause like, well, yeah, it's not, it's never favorable for a snake to blow himself up with a grenade. And higher percents, you could argue, cause you're, you're dead to a slight breeze anyway. So long as you ensure that, you know, your grenade isn't killing you, which grenade is not really known to, to be a kill move. It's kind of just a good move to get damage slash kind of extend combos. So you use that grenade to put rage it on yourself, and then all of a sudden, your opponent is at like half your percent, but still in kill range. It's just something to think about. You go on well, Luigi, just knowing that uh, Relwood can actually go for that nair. Me. Um. All right, but kind of at the at a, at a exact like similar um, percent <laughs> as that last talk of the last game, where like while well, Luki is at is just well into the 100s, and Relwood is about to enter the 100s, but like. <laughs> They can both kill each other at any moment. <laughs> and that makes it very threatening. But yeah, finds that. He gave him the chair. <laughs> like I said before. Relwood getting a fresh 36% off of that. Gave him the chair. <laughs> Now gassing him out. Yeah, I feel like Relwood is kind of just existing, like, exactly outside of uh, Walugi's, like, threat range. And that's allowing for him to, like, get ahead of the of the dash attacks. And I'm really just putting himself in a in, in favorable position for, like, yeah, you can give him the chair. <laughs> Because the dash attack whiffed, and now he's vulnerable, so just... Ah! <laughs> and I saw the F-Till coming out again from, uh, Relwood. Interesting that the Nair doesn't break the Uppy, but the... But Game & Watch Uppy does break snakes. <laughs> And yeah, dash attack, taking that kill. That's a move that, like, takes a lot of percent to actually kill with dash attack. It's a strong move, don't get me wrong. It's just not a move that you think of as killing, mainly just because by the time you're at dash attack kill percent, Snake has already probably taken your sock with, like, C4 or up tilt or even, like, a back here, you know? Ooh, C4 kind of saving Walugi there. I feel like Relwood could have gotten, you know, another uh, Nair. But. Getting the uh, Sour Spot of Dash Attack. And yeah, there it is again. Relwood kind of just existing right outside that, that Dash Attack threat range and then just punishing it. Whenever, whenever Walugi is sending it out or throwing it out, I mean, this is not Pokemon. Dash attack! I choose you. Ooh, tense situation here for Walugi. Relwood does have another stock to work. Oh, no kill screen. Just a hammer. <laughs> no thoughts. No kill screen. Hammer. So yeah, Relwood taking that set. Was kind of close though. Every other, every game besides like this last one. 
Uh, we're gonna have fun, chat. Because I think I just heard Barking Frog and Pond Master be called up. Um, if I get my way, <laughs> this will not be Young Link Steve. However, I feel like the matchup we're gonna see is 